There's sales on robinsealark.com and you can check me out weekly on my socials at robinsealark. I also have my oil painting book out for pre-order on Amazon and the links in my description. Oil painting every day. Uh, I hope you'll support me um, in those endeavors and that you enjoy this video. I was just playing a little bit on my ukulele before I started this, so I figure, you know what, let's dedicate these uh, little chords to this video. <laughs> I'm gonna play them to get us in a vibe. <laughs> Hello and welcome to another episode on the Robin Sealark channel. Today I thought we would have a discussion uh, like unto discussions you might have in various artist communities or educational setting. The art and work parts of being an artist, some of those kind of mental distinctions we can venture into to help us in our mindsets and in uh, improving and defining our actual goals and successes. I figured this could be a nice community discussion. So if you have any input uh, along the way in the comments, I would appreciate it. And yeah, we can, we can chit chat. <laughs> so what does my work look like outside of just producing YouTube videos? I do sell paintings. I make things for this channel. I have paintings behind me, which are actually on sale right now. Lady Bay, who has been a big source of inspo and strength. But on top of that, I had a commission to do this week, which normally I don't take on commissions. But lately I've found that I have done a few for friends and family and it's been a nice experience. So I figure we can do the making of this painting uh, together and have this discussion. I had a work call, uh, a work Zoom call with my patrons <laughs> earlier this week and there was a sentiment that really stood out for me from it from my patron Andrew Reinhardt. Andrew just graduated. He's been working as a full-time artist now for two months and he does heart playing and other multimedia projects. You know what? I'm gonna play a clip from that segment right now. Yeah, the, the thing that I was think I was getting wrong going into being a full-time artist, it's not so much about wanting to execute your ideas and then telling people to give you money, but it's more so about like finding out what people are wanting people to make and then figuring out how can I do that while also being like my kind of artist and working within the parameters that are offering funding. When Andrew mentions figuring out what people are wanting made and looking into how you can do that while being your own kind of artist, I think that's at the heart of a really good conversation to have about the best ways that you can grow your creativity, feel fulfilled in community and connection with other people through your art. Also a really nice way to think of the content that you're producing if you are wanting to provide it in a work position as a service to other people, thinking through the lens of how can this not just benefit me personally, but how can it benefit others? How can I be part of a wider need? What is not just the solo lens on the art that I create, but the wider lens of what is being looked for and how I can be participating through creating artwork that is connecting with other people. I put down a few different notes for what this concept makes me think of. The first thing that comes to mind is how art is this beautiful, free and creating act. And I think a uh, thing that I can get really sucked into and uh, enjoy about it is kind of the meditative flow state that it brings about when I'm able to really latch onto an idea that I like and sink into it and just kind of ride that journey with an art piece or a concept for a while. There's a certain peace that I get in in entering those states. And you can get into those, I guess, in more or less self or externalized motivated ways. We have to achieve, I think, some kind of balance, being unconstrained and full creative potential being at your fingertips 
and then what the constraints are that define what it is that helps motivate you and direct you. How does that feed into larger artist community and society? What are the ways in which the art that you are making is able to have an emotional or uh, physical, aesthetic um, connection, cultural connection with people? What is the kind of emotional work you bring to your work and how is it of wider benefit to other people in a way that it's going to connect with them. If you take that concept and bring it over to me, I want to be producing paintings and I want to be producing video content and educational content and community resources. So how can I structure my content and things that I'm making in such a way that it will uh, be of benefit to me and also to people who come to look at the things that I'm making. What's that mutual relationship? Because uh, I, I do think that there's a certain level of gratification, gratification uh, satisfaction, joy that comes in making work that is meaningful, not just in a self indulgent sort of way, but also in a wider sense. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is the idea of our expectations when it comes to our creative field. I listened to a podcast by my friend Andy J. Pizza. He does the Creative Pep Talk podcast, but I was listening to that this week and he talked about the concept of micro-defining your success. and. Uh, here I'm gonna, I guess, differentiate that there are a lot of different artistic or creative goals one can have, and some people have a financial motivation behind, uh, you know, wanting to support themselves with their creativity, and others shouldn't or don't, and, uh, you know, so bear in mind any of this advice with where you land on that, but micro-defining success is something that will set up your expectations in your creative pursuits so that you can feel joy in achieving the things that you actually are wanting to try to achieve with your work. Let me reference some notes on this. You're able to identify your unique capabilities and strengths and figure out how you want to use them to benefit others or find joy in your own personal creative practice. As far as creativity goes, this definitely ties back to a Dolly Parton favorite quote of mine and many others, to find who you are and do it on purpose. What are your specific things that you want to be achieving with your creative work? Who are the people you want to be reaching? And how can you step away from thinking that you need to be a very specific type of person or creator and reach a little deeper to embrace your unique characteristics. Having positive mind frames and ideals upon which you're basing your personal success, what kind of person you are, how you want to measure artistic or creative progress, is it going to be, I think, think a big part of building the kind of mind frame you need for having a sustain, sustainable creative life and experience, finding joy in the different parts of your journey with your creativity. I also think it can be instrumental in giving you the motivation that you need to work through the different feelings that come with being an artist. There's positive benefit in setting an expectation of what it feels like to work through hard things, to push yourself to new levels, to try to scale up the work that you're doing, or to connect with people in new ways to challenge yourself by selling bigger pieces and feel the stresses and successes that come with putting yourself out there in new ways. It's not always a perfectly positive experience. When you're exercising in any sort of way, creative, physical, it takes a certain amount of exertion and tolerance for that process. And I think by having an expectation that not all parts of the artistic work that you do are gonna feel perfectly great. Sometimes they're going to be anxious making and sometimes they're going to be very exciting. Sometimes you're going to feel overwhelmed. 
And in those moments, being able to take a, a step back for a bigger perspective of the day-to-day -day work that you put in, how that affects you in a week-to-week, -week, in a month-to-month -month sort of way, encouraging yourself that this is just part of the feelings of life, part of the benefits and joy of successes that we get to experience is in those hard-earned little steps. Even as a hobby, when you're making artwork and you have some dull moments in the process of working through a project, those aren't reasons to abandon ship or to be too discouraged. Those are part of the uh, work and the steps that build really incredible experiences and long-term loving relationships with your creativity. I think we can umbrella some of those working moments, that journey, that climb that Miley Cyrus sings about in the idea of maintenance work and the essential part that maintenance work plays into your life, your work, your home, your general eating and health and strength. Uh, while that's not something that always brings a static joy, it is something that brings longer term health sustainability and elevated uh, way of being. So there is a certain maintenance work that comes to the artistic work that you're doing, the creativity that you engage in. Not only will you have moments of great success, you'll have many more small, uh, hard-earned moments that build a success and that you need to sink into by way of appreciating them for their smaller joys. I took some notes in my phone so I could rapid fire go through some points. We talked about freedom and creative constraint. We talked a little bit about art for joy, but the flip side of that more, the public benefit or service that you are producing with the work that you are making and kind of framing your work through that lens of it not just being um, your own pursuit, but something you want to engage with others through. Remembering the importance of certain maintenance work that you do and how that doesn't always feel amazing. I think that's something I've needed to remember. Sometimes I'm continually striving after having these incredible moments one after another, but maintenance work and day-to-day -day life are the most valuable things and need to be appreciated in their small moments rather than always seeking out something ecstatic. You will look back on moments that feel hard in a given time when you're trying to accomplish something and be really grateful and have joy from that memory for a long time. So it's good to remember that you don't always have to feel great while you are working. In thinking of the art versus the work, I think there is importance to lessening a scarcity mindset about your own creativity, to engage in a journey and a relationship in a sustained way, something you can come to with renewed interest and vigor. In Andy's podcast, he talked about the idea of engaging with creative work that you find yourself having an endless capacity to have interest in, something you can continually come to and find joy from. As you adapt and go through different seasons of your creativity, remembering to be engaging presently in those things and finding what is continually drawing you back so that you can build around your own strengths and interests is helpful for taking away from scarcity and to having a sustainable way of looking at the work that you're engaging in. When I think about art versus the work part of being an artist, I think about the effort that you have to put into sustaining your creative practice because there are times when art can shoot out of us with joy and vigor and there are times when we have to walk side by side with our creativity through different seasons of life. And that will inevitably have an effect on our relationship with creativity. And I think when you position it through the lens of it being this long-term uh, enduring thing that brings you joy and you're able to grow in, in sustainable mindsets, that that sets you up for a long-term successful relationship. When you are working with your own personal creativity or doing the day-to-day -day journey of being an artist, 
I think these are wonderful things to keep in mind to have yourself be in a positive mind frame and managing expectations and arriving to your creative practice with good mind frames that are going to be able to sustain you and keep you grounded in your interests, your personal uh, strengths, and how you want to be continuing to carve out that life journey with your creative pursuits because it is an evolution and a path and something you are building. We're here for the long haul, we're here for creative work and for personal work and joy and in that commitment we are committed to all sides of what it means to walk walk this path of life. I hope that you guys uh, found something in this that you could bring back to your personal practice that will hopefully help you sustain uh, longer joy and not just the artistic highs of your creative work but also the work part of being an artist. I would love to hear anything you have to say about this in the comments. Sales going on at robinsealark.com and you can check me out on my socials at robinsealark. I also have a Patreon and my books available for pre-order. Oil painting every day. Uh, check out the links in my description. Thanks.